Malcolm was honest in one respect, that he always said he had no control over us, and he didn't. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about the Sex Pistols. Chrissy! Will you marry me? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at stories and anecdotes about this seminal punk band you may not have heard. Let us know in the comments what your favourite Pistols song is. Number 10. Lyndon was sued by Jones and Cook. In 2021, it came to light that Steve Jones and Paul Cook were engaged in a legal battle with their acerbic former frontman, Johnny Rotten. I'm 18! I'm sex in the grass! 18! What a farce! It all happened because celebrated director Danny Boyle, best known for 1996's Train Spotting, was working on a Sex Pistols miniseries detailing the history of the group. Lyndon didn't want Pistol's music to be used in the series because he said the whole thing painted him in a bad light, but Jonesy and Cook weren't having any of it. I am the Antichrist. I am an anarchist. It turned out that decades prior, the band members had signed an agreement that the majority rules on decisions regarding the band, which meant Boyle was allowed to use Pistol's classics no matter how much Lyndon complained. I don't think I can be in a band called Cutie Jones and his Sex Pistols. The name's disgusting. I might come to a rehearsal of a band called Sex Pistols. Number 9. 10 years to gold. God said the Queen was never number one. There was no number one that week. <laughs> it remains one of the biggest and most deserved achievements in British music that the Pistols' one and only album, never mind the bollocks, here's the Sex Pistols, soared to number one, despite being widely banned. I'll take the Queen. To get an album certified gold in the UK, 100,000 copies must be sold. The Pistols achieved that in a matter of weeks, but in the US, it's five times greater. It took the record a full decade to be certified gold across the pond, only achieving this honour in 1987. I don't even know if we got a number one. You did. Really? And they still didn't play you. <laughs> Today though, it's double platinum in the UK and platinum in the US, and it's available uncensored in all major music retailers. Number 8. They weren't the first to say the F word. It was perfect stand-up comedy. It was all for In 1976, the Sex Pistols' nationwide notoriety peaked after a disastrous appearance on the Today Show. Disastrous for presenter Bill Grundy, that was. They are punk rockers. The new craze, they tell me. They are heroes, not the nice clean Rolling Stones. You see, they are as drunk as I am. The band, their groupies, and Grundy had all been drinking already by the time the interview was recorded, and Grundy was obviously angling to get them to make fools of themselves. It ended with Steve Jones saying the F word on air and calling Grundy a dirty old man, making headline news up and down the country. We'll read afterwards, shall we? <laughs> you dirty son, you dirty old man. However, contrary to popular belief, this wasn't the first time that particular swear was used on British TV. That honour likely goes to Irish writer Brendan Behan, a full 20 years before the Pistols. Number 7. Steve Jones couldn't read. Much of the more recent information about the Sex Pistols comes from guitarist and founding member Steve Jones, aka Jonesy, and the autobiography he published in 2016, Lonely Boy. Yep. Typical enemy. Mm. Not worth reading, to be honest. Nah. But for much of his life, Steve Jones was actually illiterate. This and more he revealed in Lonely Boy, saying he didn't learn to read properly until middle age. In Pistol, we often see the pretender's Chrissy Hind reading Jonesy the Pistol's salacious news articles. One of the band said to me afterwards, actually, we're not into music. 
we're into chaos. He also said in Lonely Boy that he likely has ADHD and dyslexia, as well as crediting the pistols with saving him from a life of crime. On the pulls, have we, lads? Hello, officer. Step out of the vehicle, sir. All right. Number six, The Beatles. I'm the best musician. He also a jumped up little Ponty likes The Beatles and minor diminished fools. It was a long-standing myth for years that the reason the group's primary bassist, Glenn Matlock, was booted from the band was that he liked pop music too much. And then there's Glenn waffling on about nice things like the Beatles. Matlock's love of the Beatles and ABBA is no secret, but is it really why he got the sack? Especially when he was clearly the best musician of them all. Well, no, not likely. Matlock himself has said that he chose to leave the band because he was getting tired of McLaren and of Johnny Rotten, while others allege that Jones was the one given the job of firing him under instructions from McLaren. Glenn had reached a point where he decided that the band's direction was absolutely alien to anything he wanted to be associated with. Matlock has since reunited with the Pistols for various reunion tours, however. Number 5. Who almost married Chrissy? If you watch Danny Boyle's Pistol, available to stream in the UK via Disney+, Plus, you'll have seen Chrissy Hind featuring as a major character and the on-off main love interest of Steve Jones. Put him back. Or I'll beat your brains out. I didn't think the Yanks played cricket. I'm not playing. Jones and Hines say that this isn't entirely true to life. They did spend time together, but there was no romantic relationship. The bride and groom. How long will it be so we can get a divorce? I don't know. All right, I'll check. In Pistol, though, Jonesy agrees to marry Chrissy for visa reasons, and then goes off to sleep with someone else. Rotten steps in, but the wedding still doesn't go through. Chrissy! Will you marry me? Please! In reality, Hind says Rotten was the first person she asked, and he was eventually replaced by Sid Vicious, though the registry office was closed, so they never tied the knot. Number 4. Sid Vicious didn't play bass. The best time of the band of all was when Sid first joined, and he was really determined to learn the bass and fit in and be part of the band. After Matlock got the axe, Sid Vicious was brought on as the band's new bassist. Vicious notably could not play bass whatsoever. He was supposedly more interested with looking like a Sex Pistol rather than learning how to play his instrument. Well, he wasn't even playing at the end. You know, he could barely play anyway. Half the time he wasn't even plugged in. On the only Pistols record, Vicious plays the bass on just one song, Bodies, but it was buried in the mix on purpose. You do realise you will need to learn to play? Not really. In the end, the bass parts were either recorded by Matt Block before his departure or by Steve Jones. Is that right? Not really. Interestingly, Jonesy also has limited musical ability at the beginning and had to quickly learn guitar on the job. Today, he's one of the most celebrated guitarists of all time. Number 3. Spongen wasn't kidnapped. Yet another scene from Pistol, in the fifth episode, Sid Vicious meets Nancy Spongen and their lethal relationship begins. In the show, we see the band members hatch a plan to force Spongen on a plane back to America in order to save the band. We'll track her on a plane with a one-way ticket to New York. How? Pull a sack over her head and stick her in the boot of a car. They actually follow through with this too, in stark contrast to what really happened when McLaren had this idea in real life. Yes! It's said that while there was talk of a way to suddenly get Nancy away from Sid, it never came to fruition. Spongen was never pushed onto a plane, and she never dramatically returned to London. <laughs> It certainly did make for good drama, though. We did everything to get rid of Nancy that was physically possible. I even dangled her out of a window one night by her ankles. Number two, what happened to Nancy? Before the end of the decade, both Nancy Spungen and Sid Vicious were dead, aged just 20 and 21. And I actually introduced her to Sid. And shame on me. Spongen's body was found in a hotel room she was sharing with Vicious in New York with a fatal knife wound. 
and Vicious was arrested for the crime, though he pleaded not guilty. There was tracks of blood leading into the bathroom where the body of the female was found lying under the sink. Before it could go to court, Vicious too had lost his life due to his battle with addiction. To this day, it's not clear what happened. The spike-haired 21-year-old London punk rock star said nothing as he was taken out of the 17th Precinct, New York, after being arrested for the fatal stabbing of his girlfriend, Nancy Laura Spongen. Vicious did have a knife, but it didn't match the murder weapon. Many people have speculated that somebody else may be to blame for her death, including McLaren, and that Vicious's death wasn't accidental either, but we'll never know. Number one, they disagree about Malcolm. You get 25% and we pay your expenses. All very standard stuff. Were the Sex Pistols the band themselves or their slimy manager Malcolm McLaren? Well, that all depends on who you ask. I became friends with Malcolm because he had a lot of contacts in music. He seemed to know everybody. He finds a way in with his blag. With two opposing documentaries existing, and the band members themselves still disagreeing to this day about how much McLaren helped or hurt the band, we might never know the true story. John said he thought the problem was Malcolm and we should get rid of Malcolm and carry on and try and work it out that way. Of course, today, most people agree that McLaren definitely damaged the band, pushing them into confrontations, hitting them against each other, and relentlessly controlling their public image but Jonesy remains at least a little sympathetic to him. John came over, we tried to have a clear the air talk. We said to him, I don't want to carry on really much longer. The way this is going, it's like it's totally pointless. Someone's going to get killed. Beyond Malcolm, the surviving pistols still don't get along with each other. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.